In this video, we're gonna show you how to use Manage by Stats to dominate your Amazon business in 2020. Hello team, this is Curtis Johnson, President Managed by Stats, and I'm here with the one and only Philip Jepson, CEO and founder of MBS. In this video, we're gonna give you a brief overview of really what does MBS cover in 2020? We've had a crazy year, we've uh, seen changes in every aspect of the economy, and especially with Amazon, it's important to see how this tool suite can really help someone with their business. Absolutely. So I would say the first question that I would have is really where did this thing start? So why don't you tell me why you started Manage My Stats? Okay, I was in 2015, I had built up a business that was doing really well. It had all kinds of problems that came with the success, which is how do you keep track of everything and how do you figure out your profit? Um, and I had this data that if you're doing $10 an hour jobs in your business, you are missing the boat and right. you, know, you, you will you will never get anywhere. You have to kind of get up to the $1,000 an hour jobs. That's mm -hmm. what you should be doing. And everything that's less than that, you should either outsource or automate, right? right? So the goal with MBS was automate as much as possible sure. more of this so I could, you know, keep myself at $1,000 an hour. And the same thing for anybody that uses MBS. Well, that's excellent. Uh, why don't we roll right into what we kind of want to cover in this video of what does Manage by Stats cover right here middle of 2020, and how can they use Managed by Stats to really expand their business? Good, Sound let's good? do that. Perfect. So the first thing that anyone's gonna see when they log into Managed by Stats is going to be their dashboard. So you'll see that we have these elements here that each of them is a different dashlet that shows a different element or aspect of your business. And these can be heavily customized but what I think is most important is when you are looking at what is the dashboard for Managed by Stats, why did you have it cover this information? So take the analogy of driving a car, mm -hmm. right? There's certain things that you must know when you're driving a car. You need to know what speed you're going at so you don't get tickets. You need to know what direction you're going maybe, right? That's what your map Hopefully your forward. GPS. <laughs> um, and um, you need to know, are you running out of gasoline, right? Um, unless you have a Tesla, are you running out of power? So this is vital information that tells you what's going on, right? When you're running an Amazon business or any business for that matter, you need KPIs, key performance indicators. Uh, these things, are, you need no sessions because that basically tells you how much exposure you're getting. Is anybody looking at your listings on Amazon, right? So sessions is key, it's visibility, it's mm -hmm. exposure, right? Then you have conversion rate. How many of these sessions are actually turning into a sale, right? How many units right. are you selling? Right. And if there's, you know, if sessions are going up, but conversions are going down, you know that you have a problem on the conversion side. Right. And that is, you know, your reviews, the copy, the images, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that tells you something, you know, these are the areas that you need to focus on to, right. to fix that, right? Then the next thing is profit. Now you may have sessions going up and you may have sales going up and conversions going up and you may be losing your shirt, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're selling at a discount or your right. cost of goods is too high or whatever, if you're losing money, it doesn't matter that those other two things are doing great. Right. If, if profit's not doing great, so then now your cost of goods or your advertising expenses or your, you know, there's all kinds of things that, you know, if profits are not doing great, you need to look at there. Right. And then we kind of threw in there also the average star rating uh, from your reviews. Uh, because that by itself can make a huge difference. Yeah, it kind of make, right? or break, make or break your business. It can, it can make or break the business. Um, so you need to see if something changes on that and, and you know be able to jump on that. That's awesome. And then I guess from there, since Managed by Sets has so many tools, there are different little elements that cover some of the broader tool, but just in a snapshot. So we have an inventory dashlet, as we call it. We have a seller mail dashlet, and we have all of these little bits. So from First glance, you can kind of get an idea of everything that's happening in your business. All right, and you need to see if automation breaks. Right. right? Yeah. And some of these tools are in there to just you know alert you if something is not working right. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. For simplicity's sake, we figured we'd take all twenty-five tools and really distill it down to four major areas. And the first area there would be stats and numbers. Second would be seller mail, which is our automated buyer seller messaging. Then advertising and finally catapult. Good, so starting with stats and numbers, the first thing that, it's actually the first menu item, 
and so it's the easiest place to start, yep. is really statistics. And this is kind of a snapshot from Amazon of where your income is and where the expenses from Amazon are in relation to that. Yeah. So this was created as the very first thing we made. And really what's unique about this from, from any Amazon tools is this looks at settled transactions. So it looks at what actually has been finished. Amazon has all kinds of statistics that basically show you what people have ordered or whatever, but those are not final statistics mm. because they haven't settled. These are things that they ordered, but they haven't paid for yet or whatever, right? It hasn't right. shipped yet. So we tell you exactly where the money came from, what it was for, what Amazon kept from that, right. what other expenses you had in there, you know, advertising and maybe some, you know, maybe outside of Amazon advertising. Um, all of that goes in there so you can see what is your true profit right. on those sales or on that brand or on that particular product. And then what we do with Managed by Stats is we take these numbers and then we throw them on a graph. And there's a lot of power to that. And I know that you know a lot about this area. So why did we, why do we have so much emphasis on giving a visual representation of this information? Well, if you look at just a snapshot right now, that doesn't tell you how it compares with what happened in the past, right. and you can't really predict where it's gonna go in the future. If you put it on a graph, you can see what is the trend, which way is it headed, right? And you can maybe step back a little bit, and you know, it may be down, you know, right today. As a business owner, you probably don't even want to be managing it on a daily or weekly basis. You probably want to step back and going, you know, I want to look at what the three week trend is here right. and kind of going, okay, if 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 it's going down over three weeks. You got a problem. That, that, you got yeah. a problem and you got to handle it. You got to dive in. You really got to roll your sleeves up and, and deal yeah. with it. Um, and if it's going up, the momentary dip isn't going to be something where you just freak out and panic right. because you need to look at the trend. Now with Catapult, you'll see that the menu is actually broken down into the normal flow in which you would find a product and bring it to market. Finder and Retriever are really there to help you locate what product it is that you wanna get rolling with. I can say from personal experience, since I'm a brand new seller, um, that I'm using the Retriever tool on a daily basis. Actually, I'm not anymore, because you know we found ourselves the product that we wanna roll forward with, which we're really excited about. But I, my business partner and I were looking at these points and going and thinking how impossible it would be to try and do this without a tool like Retriever. And then Keyword Scout is gonna help you find the words that are actually going to drive traffic to that product. And then Distiller and Wordsmith are there to basically take those words, put them in your listing in both a natural and an efficient way. And then once you have that listing going, Keyword Tracker is just to make sure that you stay on point. You're still tracking the right keywords, that they're still trending keywords, and really make sure that your listing is you know, really efficient. And catapults, kind of like the name implies, you're listing from nothing to in the stratosphere. Yeah, and these tools are, you know, this is stuff that normally before this took a long time. Awesome, well the next thing would be advertising. And I think a question that I would have, and I think a lot of our viewers would have, is why would you use Managed by Stats tool for advertising as opposed to just going to Seller Central? What advantage do you have there? Yeah. All right, good question. So really, uh, if you're in Seller Central in the advertising area, that has come a long way, but you still kind of have to drill in Every single campaign, if you, you know, if you want to see what's happening in that campaign, you can drill in from the campaign down to the ad, ad groups and ads and keywords. But then if you want to see keywords in another campaign, you have to go all the way back out and then back into that one. So you mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you, you're zooming in and out all the time, right? So there's a lot of stuff that, you know, you, you might want to just deal with keywords because you really, really keywords is most of the time where you're doing all the optimization, sure. not really at the campaign level, right? right. So. We made it possible to automate things so that, uh, for example, we have uh, tacos, target ACOS. Right. So if you want to set a, a target of maybe 35% um, revenue goes to ad spend, then you can say, okay, I want to have a 35% uh, target A cost. Mm -hmm. And then you can tell the system to just keep you at that and just adjust the bids Until you, uh, you know, to keep you there. Yeah. In advertising, it's funny, but in campaigns, there is so much data. It's overwhelming. It's an overwhelming amount of data. So if you don't have a way of 
seeing all of it together and sorting it and filtering it in certain ways and just seeing this is the 5% that I actually need to deal with or these are the top top worst and top best you know things to look at yeah. and then you deal with those if you can handle the extremes very fast that's kind of what it's all about and then automating everything else You mentioned the point of you want to do minimal $10 an hour actions and really focus on the high end of your business. Right. And PPC is sort of a weird mix in between because in some ways it can be tedious and feel like it should only be $10 an hour, but it could be the most important thing in your business. Yeah. So we found that you really don't want to, uh, you don't want to let go of control of PPC yeah. because really an Amazon business is a marketing business, That's right. right? So you have to be good at it. You have to know what's happening. And then you have the other kind of person who basically doesn't want to have to learn all that PPC stuff right. in that level of detail. So there again, if you don't want to have to learn all of that stuff, but you want to be successful with PPC, you need to use somebody who's good at it, right? right. And that's why we created a artificial intelligence based service called PPC Logic that essentially is outsourcing it to an agency mm -hmm. with us being the agency. And we made it different from any other agency because normally you pay an agency based on how much your ad spend is, right? right. So they make more money if they spend more of your ad money, right? right? <laughs> we don't like that because, you know, we sell on Amazon ourselves and, and we've used ad agencies like that. And not only are you paying them, but you're also suddenly paying a lot more in ad costs, right? right? Because that's how they make their money. So with us, it's based on, on the revenue, right? Mm. So if we increase your revenue, then we make more money as well. And we have to do it for three months straight before we charge you anything more, right? right? So it's a very, very fair way of doing it. Um, but it, you get an expert on our side and you get the artificial intelligence as well, which goes in there multiple times a day and makes the adjustments based on the strategy that's identified. And the other thing is the AI handles, you know, again, a problem, even if you're an absolute expert at this stuff and you really can dive in and you can pull out the important data and stuff like that you can't be spending all day going in there and making bit adjustments throughout the day exactly. right so you may know what you need to do but you need somebody or something to do it and that's what pvc logic does it just makes the adjustments for you based on the objective without you having to be in there several times a day and there are also other things that potentially come before you're at the point of doing something like pvc logic yes we also have again an advertising tool like we talked about earlier but we have a service for doing listing analysis so we have someone actually look at a seller's listing and make sure that it's what we like to call PPC ready. Yeah, and the, the point of that is if, <laughs> if your listing is crappy, you can spend an enormous amount of money trying to get people to buy, right? right? It's far, far better to go in there and one, make sure you have a good product so you get good reviews, right? And two, make sure that the listing looks fantastic and converts well yeah. because now you have to spend far less advertising money. Awesome. Well, I think that kind of gives us an idea of advertising diving on to our last area and an area that has seen a lot of um, confusion and scare for some sellers is really our buyer seller messaging, which is seller mail. How have we really responded to these changes in the area of buyer seller messaging? So we follow this pretty closely. Obviously, we're very involved in this. Uh, we are on the Amazon Developer Council, and so we get advance notice of things happening, stuff like that. But buyer seller messaging has been around. I mean, I've been in this game for seven years now, and uh, it's been around from the very beginning. It was very, very primitive in the beginning, and it was hard to automate, right? Um, but we automated it pretty early on, and. Even though people kind of get the sense from Amazon at times that, you know, oh, maybe I shouldn't be selling this out and maybe they'll close my account and stuff like that. Um, really, if you're not doing something that's egregious and really bad, Amazon wants you to be proactive and in touch with your customers, right? Because it makes a better customer experience. They don't want you to do stuff that they're gonna object to, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't want you to spam them, they don't want you to follow up with them more times than is necessary because they don't want you to piss off your customers, right. essentially, right? So as long as you're doing things that are helping the customer, 
you're not going to have a problem. Yeah. Of course, getting reviews on Amazon is hugely important. It's hugely important for Amazon to have reviews, right? Because it's the social proof that allows yeah. people to buy online. But it's also hugely important to the individual sellers. And many sellers went too far in asking for reviews. So Amazon eventually said, hey, you cannot ask for reviews or, you know, you can't you can't ask for unbiased reviews, right. uh, you know, or, or biased reviews. Give you us can't, a five star review. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so they've been clamping down on making this more and more standard, right? And they, six, eight months ago, they came out with, you know, a standardized way of doing this review request. So it used to be that you could just send out emails asking for reviews, right? Now you, after this change, you couldn't. Now you had to go in, open up every single order, right? Find the button that says request review, right? And sometimes it wouldn't go through because you're asking too early or you're asking too late or whatever, right? Um, so that has all been automated inside the seller mail. You can basically just say, you know, hey, I, I wanna get, you know, ask for a review after five days or whatever, right? right? And it'll just do it automatically. And uh, it's it's a, a great system because on Amazon's side, they make sure that if they have already left the review, the request doesn't get, even go out. So there's a lot of advantages to this and it's a completely standardized way of doing it. And we just automated it so you don't have to go in and open up every single order and click the button and blah, blah, right. blah, right? You know, we're doing it through the API, which is the way Amazon wants you to Absolutely. do it. So everything is completely above board and super easy to use. Well, that kind of wraps up the four major areas we wanted to cover. I do feel like we need to make a special mention though for, yes, we have our existing inventory tool, but we've been putting a lot of time in building this new inventory tool that will be around probably around the time that we actually get this video out. Yeah, it really is a supply chain management mm. tool, right? And the difference is inventory typically is you have Amazon and you have your warehouse um, and that's kind of how you deal with it, right? And you, you may not even have your warehouse, you may just have your manufacturer, right? right. But um, really you need to be able to keep track a certain, I know I do, right? I need to be able to keep track of multiple products in multiple warehouses, multiple FBA warehouses, but my own multiple warehouses as well, and multiple manufacturers, mm -hmm. right? And we have the additional step of some of these products require components because right. I don't buy the finished product necessarily. I have, you know, a manufacturer that finishes the product, but we supply some of the components to right. it, right? So keeping track of all of that and being able to predict when are you going to run out and being able to customize, you know, well, we have Prime Day coming and we're going to do 10 times more on that day than right. we do otherwise. And how does that affect inventory? Um, this is something that you can do when you are dealing with two or three products. You can kind of do that with a spreadsheet. Yeah. Once you get beyond that, I mean, five or 10 products, it really starts becoming hard to manage, yeah. right? So it gets very complex once you're beyond five products or something yeah. like that. And you need to have a tool that handles that and that's what it does. That's awesome. Well, that's kind of like a little bit of a verbal sneak peek, I guess you could say. <laughs> and uh, with that, I'd say that we've actually kind of covered everything that you wanna understand is the basics of Manage by Stats. And again, there's 25 different tools. And as you can do, if you were doing the math and counting it up, we didn't cover 25. If you have interest in more about one of the tools we've already covered, or you want to learn about details of these other tools, we have an entire series of training videos as well as knowledge-based videos that you can find on YouTube that cover each of these tools, sometimes two, three, four different videos on one tool, especially if it's more complicated. So don't think that this is all you get. We have plenty of content for you to digest. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, hit the bell to get notifications, because again, We've got some amazing videos coming up and I don't think you want to miss out. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us. We are happy to talk to you and answer all questions. Very good. Take care. We'll see you in the next video.